Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord again. Psalms 111, verse 1 says, Praise you the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Praise God. We thank Father, we give an honor to you. We do praise you again today in the name of Jesus. We humble ourselves before you. Father, we come to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. And help us give us a tenant ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Bless and strengthen your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's another day, another Sunday. Praise God. <laughs> I mm -hmm. want to start out. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you ever seen the movie called, I think it's called The uh, Ultimate Gift with James Gardner playing in it? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good movie, good, clean movie to go look at. So sometime, it's been a while since I've seen it, but uh, mm -hmm. it's about a wealthy man. He's wealthy. James Gardner is the main actor. He's, he's wealthy. I mean, he's rich, 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 okay? And, um, <laughs> well, he passes away. Mm -hmm. And you know how siblings are? And this man was rich. They was they couldn't wait to get around the, for the lawyer to tell them what they gonna get. So they all sitting in the room, and the lawyers there to tell them <laughs> what they're gonna get because they they was rich, rich. They've been living off of them. <laughs> well, some of them are upset because they didn't get what they wanted. You know, <laughs> they thought they were gonna get a whole lot, and uh, they didn't. <laughs> so a lot of them were left out upset. And but he had a he had a grandson that he that he sort of special about him and he uh some kind of way he did a video for he passed and he said i got this ultimate gift for you well in order to get this ultimate gift he had to pass certain tests test after mm -hmm. test and uh and in it i was hearing the lord say he was talking to me this morning it was like you know uh 2025 is the year of uh you know get your house in order with this young boy mm -hmm. he had to get his life in order he had to get his house in order, in order to receive these gifts. He wouldn't get them unless he passed the test. And, and I heard the Lord say, 2025 is a year to get your house in order. He's got things that mm -hmm. he wants to bless us with, but we, we got to have our house, and we got to have our heart right. We got to be living right, you know. So, mm -hmm. in, in the end of the movie, I'm just making it short, <coughs> he did pass all the tests. He got his life together. <laughs> and, whoo, First time he got, was it one million or how was it? Uh, 100,000. 100,000. Then he got another check. And oh. at the end, I think it's like a billion dollars. But he got his. Two billion. Two billion. <laughs> oh, two billion. <laughs> got his life in order. Mm -hmm. And God is just saying, he's going to and fro. I mean, let me read that scripture. Uh, that's Second Chronicles 16 and 9. It says, for the eyes of the Lord run mm -hmm. to and forth throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect mm -hmm. to want him. Mm -hmm. He's looking, mm -hmm. I'm looking, 2025, I'm looking to see who's got the house in order so I can bless them. This young man passed all those tests mm -hmm. and he got blessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's a matter of having your priorities together. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's most important? You know, sometimes you we can get... Uh, Disencouraged because if things are so far over your head, it come overwhelming That's to you, true. and you find yourself wanting to give up. You know, but no, 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 no. God is able to handle it. Get it in order. Just yeah. get it in order. Okay. Good. You know, in the book of as we talked last week, we talked a little bit. This is like part two. We talked about Second uh, Kings chapter twenty, verse one through six. It said, "In those days." was Hezekiah sick unto death. And mm -hmm, the prophet mm -hmm. As Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thou, said the Lord, mm -hmm. set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. So he's telling mm -hmm, you, you, mm -hmm, you're going to mm -hmm. die. You, mm -hmm. you need to get your house in order. And he mm -hmm. turned his face mm -hmm. to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember mm -hmm. now. In other words, like, <clears throat> Lord, remember my life. I, you know, I was serving you. He said, how I walked before thee in truth and with a, oh, there you go, mm -hmm. with a perfect heart. And have mm -hmm. done that which mm -hmm. is good in thy sight, and has a cow whip. So in other words, he said, Lord, I, 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 I love you. I, my heart was for you. And guess what happened? Because he had a pure heart, mm -hmm. God turned that thing around. He saw the glory of God upon him. God healed him. And all God is saying to us today mm -hmm. is get your, get your life in order. Get your heart right. 
mm. you know, mm. like I said, the movie was it was an excellent movie. I, I really recommend going to see the ultimate the ultimate gift. He got that little mm -hmm. young boy got himself together, got his life together, mm -hmm. and he got he got the he got the ultimate gift at the end. Mm. So you know, in in getting your life in the order, it may not be the way you think a lot That's of right. times. So, mm -hmm. it, of course, in that movie, and I think there's a lot of truth in it, is that he lost like everything that he, he was spoiled. Yes. You know, and yes. he wanted what he wanted like right now, yeah. and didn't have no patience. Listen, but see, in order f for God to rule and reign and to do things in your life to take you forward there's some things you, you you have to have a balance in your life okay and and lots of times that would take going through a wilderness experience <laughs> yeah. because sometimes you may be selfish and don't know it but then a wilderness experience will take it sometimes it means you to develop and learn patient you know god talked about the fruit of the spirit in galatians the fifth chapter the fruit of the spirit you love joy peace gentleness goodness you know long suffering all the you, in order for this fruit to prevail in you, you gonna ha maybe have to go through some things. Cause sometimes you really, if you're selfish, you'll be arrogant. You get boastful, you get proud, you'll think me, me, what about me? And you might not even realize that. And But God loves you and he wants the best for you. So he said, get your house in order. So sometimes you pray to God and ask him, God, Help me, God. I went to him and asked him, Lord, help me, help me. Yeah. And it's like sometimes the rug may be pulled out from under you, okay? And you might thinking, oh, oh, no, Lord, I asked you to help me. And look what happened. He is helping you, That's okay? Because, right. see, you can't see. You don't know what's going on right now. But you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Get your house in order. Yeah. Good, sometimes yeah. we don't even know mm -hmm. we're selfish. Sometimes we don't That's even true. know we got pride. It's, it's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. it's, it's being on this earth. You just don't know. And. And God is saying, I'm looking for somebody. You know, in Scripture, yeah, Matthew yeah. chapter 5, verse 8, uh -huh. uh, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart. There you go again, the pure mm -hmm. in heart. He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's searching your heart, for they shall see God. You know, what's your character like? Do, you mm -hmm. know, are you moody, grumpy? Or, listen, do you, do, do you treat your... This, do you treat your, your, your the people you work with better than your, your 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 household, your family, your wife? How are you at home? You know, where everybody can see you come out. You know, you looking good. You know, hard. Mm -hmm. Don't be like the man. Listen, Matthew, read this. Matthew, nineteen sixteen. Will you read that for me? Matthew nineteen and sixteen. Hang on. Twenty two. <laughs> okay, uh, Matthew nineteen chapter six verse sixteen started. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. <coughs> but if thou wilt be in, or enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. <coughs> Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thou sayest. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou would be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Yeah. But, when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Yes, yes. Hello. See, we don't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. God is looking for somebody he can trust, somebody with a pure heart. You know, all this, all he asked this man to do, all he was saying was just get your house in order. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Listen, I got, I got great riches for you, but he couldn't let that money go that he had. Mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. And many of us today is like, Maybe if you're in the past, or test. see, sometimes, <laughs> listen, money is something else. It, it, it will change you. And all he was asking him to do was just go and sell. He was, he was checking his heart out. But he was like, oh, no, that, I got to keep this money myself. <laughs> sometimes, you know, I, I think the greater test is when you got money than when you have money, you know. 
Sometimes when, when we didn't have no money, it was like, well, I ain't got nothing. I want to give the last part to him. Go ahead and do what you say, Lord, okay. And then all of a sudden when some money comes, it's like, I don't want to go through what I just went through. So maybe I, I'm going to hold on to this. And, and, it's, and it's like, look, if you ever seen that commercial where the devil sitting on this show and the angels on this one? Angels over saying, give it away. Give it somebody. Help somebody. Def- oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You need it for yourself. You, you know all that stuff you've been wanting for? So it's, it's like a battle you're in, you know? And mm-hmm. all God is seeing your heart. He wants to say, where your heart stand? Because he said, I'm looking. I'm going to and forth. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to find somebody that I can show my glory on, that I can mm-hmm. bless, mm-hmm. and they should do some good work. You know, in the end, in the, in the movie, the young guy... <laughs> After he done been through so many tests, he lost everything, lost the girlfriend, everything, and learned how to work. And <laughs> at the end, when he got the money, he stood there like, it's not like what I thought. Yeah, that's right. And he was willing to that's help right. someone. Mm-hmm. And that's all mm-hmm. God is wanting you to do. He wants get your the heart. Order. Get yeah. your heart. We want the order. Get yeah. the right order. Put God yeah. first. Remember he said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first. <laughs> the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. That's his word. And then he says, now and then all these things shall be added unto you. That's the order of God. That's the way it works. Yeah. 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 But you know, I was looking here in the 16th chapter of, 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 uh, <coughs> of Chronicles, and she was going back talking about uh, King, uh, Hezekiah. When brother Hezekiah he says, get your house in order because you're going to die. But just before that, listen, uh, hang on. Uh, hang on, I had a point here that was uh, that I was going to bring up here on it. Hang on just a minute. Oh, I know what it was. He says here in Second Chronicles 16 chapter, okay, he says in verse, starting at verse 7, he says, at that time, Hananiah, who was a seer, who was this, that, during that time they called a seer a prophet. Okay, a prophet was called a seer back during that time. He said he came to Asa, the king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thou God. We're talking about getting the house in order, okay? All right. He said, Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of your hand. He, he was trying to do it himself. Mm-hmm. He was going by what he see. And God said, uh, 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 you, you, you got it all wrong because you were going and trying to get help over here from another king. God said, before, you relied on me. And things opened up, doors opened. But now you relied on King of Syria. And he says, and uh, God said, that's why they had been delivered in the hand. He says, uh, because thou hast, he says, and he, he gave him a question here in verse 8. He says, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubans a huge host with very many chariots? And horsemen, yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect or loyal towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly. He said, told the king, uh, uh, King Asa, he said, you done foolishly. He said, therefore, from now on, thou shalt have wars. And Asa was angry. He was wrong with the, with the prophet, with the seer. <coughs> and he put him in prison in the house. Therefore, he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. He oppressed the people. And like, you know, things don't go your way. You're gonna come, you, you still ain't going to go against God. But he wasn't loyal to God like he should have been. All God was trying to tell hey, King Asa, get your house in order. Just like he told Hezekiah, get your house in order, because you're going to die. So they get order. Hezekiah did what's right. The scripture says he turned his face to the wall. Mm-hmm. In that, I heard what he did was like he repented. He looked down on checked and exe- he judged himself. Oh, God, remember, I walked in a, with a perfect heart. In other words, I've been loyal to you, God. Remember, and the Bible says he wept much. He cried, turned his face to the wall. Oh, God, what he shut everything out, focus on God. That's what I see when he says he turned his face to the wall, just shutting everything out, focusing on God. Oh, God, forgive me. Remember your servant. I did this and I did this. I had a loyal heart. I've been perfect before you. And before, he, before the prophet 
Hananiah got out of the court. The scripture says, uh, uh, he, turned, he told him, he says, oh, I tell him I heard his prayers, and I'm going to extend to him 15 years I'm going to add to his life because of the thing that he'd done. What did he judge himself? He got his house in order. That's what he did. He got it in order. And God said, now you can go. Now you, you can receive this. And so that's all God is saying to you and I, I believe today, is just get your house in order. Uh, so don't be moved. Yeah, so you can receive what he, he, he wants to bless. He's God. Listen, God on a cow on a thousand hills. That's, and that's nothing for him. He's able, but it's going to take faith. You're going to have to believe him, trust him. He wants to do something for you. He's saying to us today, get it in order. I want to show myself strong on behalf of those who are just <coughs> willing and obedient. Most people you know are not willing, mm -hmm. or some might be willing but not obedient. <laughs> and most are not obedient, all right? Oh, I want it, God. I want it, I want it. But you got to be willing and obedient. He said it is then. You can eat the good of the land. Yes, right. In other words, he'll take care of you. He'll open a door for you you've not seen before. Just like the movie she was talking about. It's like a very good movie, very good, good plot, a good point in it. Very good point in it. You know, you just, rather than being up here, you think you all this because you're living off of somebody else. Hmm. Now, it's time for you to get it in order so God can take you a little farther than he took your father. Take your little farther than the, than the, ne the next generation. You can... All right, get it in order. Got to get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all, we've all seen people like this, and mm -hmm. you know, they portray like the out outer part, like they got their life together and everything. You know, and I, I get tickled at James sometimes. He'll say something about, "Come on, come and go with me." I said, "Why you want me to go?" He said, "Well, when you're around, he said." They be trying to impress you, and they, they might give me more money. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, you know. They 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 throw out this money. I walk up, they throw like that's true. Like is that true? That's true. <laughs> like they get all this money, yeah. they got their life together, and they just you know. <laughs> they used to me. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I even send them. Uh, we, <laughs> we might be somewhere at a place I don't know, and I say, you go go by yourself. <laughs> go. They, they they probably want to flip with you. They'll, they'll they'll give you a good deal. They give you favor, but but it works, y'all. Sometimes it, it really works. works. It works. It's tragedy. So you know they 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 throw this. You know they walk around like oh I got all this money and just throw it all out. You know, <laughs> and I want to say you know why about we talked about just thinking. <laughs> People can see right through you. You ain't got your life together. Right. I mean you might That's be right. throwing out the money. <laughs> But like I said, when the last time you took your wife out to dinner? When the last time you spent some time with your family? You know, you're so busy trying to impress people without, without, what is, how is how's your heart? Mm -hmm. How is your heart? You know, and it, it really is it's really funny how male female attraction yep. is. Because uh, really, right. you know, real. if it's I true. don't, sometimes I can mm -hmm. go in and if I don't go with him and <laughs> you come back, oh, I got favor, I got a half off or something like that. But then if I step in there, they look like, no, oh, no, you know, and, and vice versa. Oh, same baby, with me. That's right. It's the same with me, you know, you know. That's and, flesh. and it is so funny. It's, it's like that flesh wants to be seen and, yeah. and wants to get yeah. the glory. And God that's is true. saying, that's gotta true. die to all that stuff, you know. That, that is true. Get that's, your house that's, in order. that's our nature. That's the nature yeah. of man. You yeah. know, it's like, you remember the Apostle Paul said, there is no good thing that dwell within me. The Apostle Paul said, listen, who are you? Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> you think, Apostle Paul said, no good thing. He said, when I would do good, he was always present. You know? So <laughs> it is. It is. So it's like, and, and the eye and the, what you see and whatever, it's like, it, it works. She come in and she go like, oh, uh. now, now, some of them go, oh, and then now I done got aggravated at you. I'm tired of it now. <laughs> I said, honey, I said, look, they think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge them less now. This time it ain't going to work. I said, all right. <laughs> and sometimes it went the opposite way. <laughs> I charge more because I see your manipulation. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> That's but, you true. Know, That's true. Uh, <laughs> We're so worried about the outer appearance. That's, that's how the Pharisees were. In the book of Matthew, yeah. chapter 20, 23, verse 27 <clears throat> through 28. Uh, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to read this out of the message because it's, it's really, it says, he's talking, now Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. They think they got their life together now, okay? They think they, they it, you know. <laughs> we're holy, right? 
He said, you're hopeless. He, now he's talking to him. You're mm -hmm. hopeless. Mm -hmm. You religious scholars and Pharisees. He said, you're a fraud. You're a fraud. <laughs> you, you're trying phony, to act like though. you just phony. <laughs> got your life together. He said, but you're a fraud. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He said, you're, you're like a, a manicured gray plots, grass clipped and the flowers bright. But six feet down, it's all rotten bones <laughs> and worms eating flesh. People look at you and think you, you're a saint. They look at you like you got your life together. He mm. said, but beneath the skin, you're a total fraud. Nah. Oh, that's so a good one. Uh, that's a good one. So, you know, we, we <laughs> tried to impress people, and we ain't got our life together. You know, mm. Like I said, how do you mm -hmm. treat your wife? You, you treat everybody at work? Oh, just fine. They think, oh, this man is so nice. Go home, don't, you know, mm, yeah. don't even holler in a way, don't even give him no compliments, no nothing, no take mm. out to eat. But, uh, you know, God <laughs> is saying, I, I'm going, I'm, I'm, y'all listen, he's, he said 2025, just get your house in order because he's got blessings he wants to bless you with. Mm -hmm. And we're so busy trying to impress people, but God is saying, I'm looking, I want your heart for me. I'm looking at you. Uh, listen, <clears throat> it's time to get your house in order. It's time to stop mm. being a fraud, you know? Yeah, yeah. Time to serve the Lord with all your heart. Yeah, yeah just go go to him. Just come yeah. to Jesus and say, Jesus, I've been a phone. And sometimes your pride even don't want you to admit yeah. that. But you can't fool God. He's right there the whole time from the beginning to your end. And so just go before him and say, God, I have done some things that I know you're not pleased with. I have been a phony too. I've tried to impress. In other words, pride and all this. And I did everybody. Yeah, Sometimes another, you're gonna try to impress. That's your nature. That's Just right. admit it to God, Lord. I, I've done wrong. I'm asking you to forgive me from this sin and wash me. And I believe in you, God. I believe what you've done for us, and I come to receive you. What you doing? You're getting your house in order. Yeah. You're getting. You're preparing your house. Get in your life in order so you can receive a greater blessing. Now. I'm not saying it's like Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, where he, when the prophet told him to get his house in order because he was going to die. I'm not saying you're going to die. God said, just get your house in order so I can take you greater, uh, uh, more prominent places, uh, greater things, uh, greater work to be done. But in order to stand in that office, you can't be arrogant and proud and boastful. God says he hate a proud, proud heart. He hate that. Just stay humble before him so he can exalt you. He's looking to show himself strong. God is actually looking to show himself strong in whoever will listen to him and do what he say do. That's just right. obey him. That's, right. that's, that's the way you get promotion, y'all. <laughs> just listen to God. You may be ridiculed. You might be looked down. Everybody says, oh, no. Now, look, look, look in the, you find in the scripture, all throughout scripture, where the very ones that the people thought wasn't, the ones that God was calling was the one that he chose. In fact, God says this, I've chosen the foolish things of the world, the base things, the things that are not, to confound those who think they are. They think they're wise. God says, man, it's just the opposite. Of what. That's, the way, that's the way it works. And you wonder, why won't this work? And I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. He said, the way of the transgression is hard. It is it's hard. So God's saying, get it in order. Get it in order, just surrendering and admitting to him and being honest. And say, Father, I know I can't do this without you. Now, you on your way uh, for promotion. That's right. Be honest. You got to be honest, okay? <laughs> you know, when the scripture says, uh, <coughs> book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19, it said, uh, if you are willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. Wow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's how that's how you sing. Mm -hmm. You're willing to be just do what I tell you to do. Yeah, you, yeah. you know. But Living Bible says, "Listen, if you will only let me help you, okay. Mm -hmm. If you will only obey, mm -hmm. then I will make you rich." <clears throat> wait a minute, wait a minute. Did he say I make you rich? <clears throat> Everybody wants to be rich, don't they? I'll make <laughs> you rich. So mm -hmm. he's saying, you get your heart right, and you listen to me and obey me. Don't be like the, the, mm -hmm. the young boy he told him. He said. Go and say what you got and hit the pool. And he, he wanted to hold on to that money because it was like, oh, he yeah. couldn't see it. He couldn't yeah. see doing it. But God That's was right. like saying, just be obedient to me. I'll make you rich. I'll give you more than this what you got. But he mm. didn't see it. He was so mm. busy holding on to the money that he already had. And guess what the scripture yeah. says about that? First Timothy okay. chapter. <coughs> First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. Uh, 
Uh, you know, I love to read out another translation because so let, let me read the uh, English, uh, easy English Bible. It says, when people like to have lots of money, it causes all kind of bad things to happen. If you ain't got your heart right, you find yourself going down the wrong trail. Uh, Some people have stopped believing the message about Christ because they, right. ha they want to get more money. That's right. Mm -hmm. As a result, they have caused themselves to become sad <coughs> with many troubles. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. got to get your heart right. You got to get your life in order, you know, so that God, 2025, God is saying, get your house in order because I want to bless you. There's some blessings I want to bless you with that, that you probably ain't even, mm -hmm. even thought about. Mm -hmm. But if you're so busy trying to hold on to what you got, you, you, lose it, it. you lose what you get. Yeah. You said, if you just, just listen to me, if you just obey me, I'll make you rich. But you know, well, we don't have time to read the Bible. We don't have time because we're so busy trying to get rich. Yeah. How's yeah. your heart? How's your heart? Mm -mm. It's deceptive, you yeah. know. I'm telling you, it is. Riches, um, when I say riches, I'm talking finances. See, riches are not only finances. A lot of people, that, that's what they focus on. They want that dollar. They want that dollar. But it, it, riches are far greater than that. If you are not rich in your heart towards God, okay, I mean, you could be have no money and rich to God in your heart, and you will have peace, you have joy, and people look at them and they say, what? so happy they ain't got nothing well you did this cause the natural man is looking from the outer appearance look at him he living in a trailer house he ain't getting this about the fall le roof leaking and whatever God, you know it's like they're looking at the natural they said but why are they so happy he's rich towards God that's telling me this he's not gonna stay that way always he's rich towards God because he put God first and God says, now I'm going to add the other thing to What is that saying? I'm getting ready to come out of this trailer house. He getting ready to promote Amen. you to a greater blessings, okay? God is looking for that willing heart, the one who obey. Again, he do not want the riches to handle you. He want you to be able to handle the riches, see? So the man there that my wife was speaking about earlier, he wasn't operating in faith. Because yeah? he's like, Lord, what can I do that I would inherit the kingdom? And then he want the kingdom of God. He want all this. But in order to get it, he had to have his priorities together. And I think it was a, what's called a <coughs> faith test. You got to pass that faith so test. So I believe the Lord was testing him, saying, if you would be pretty. He said, Lord, I've kept all the commandments. I didn't kill. I didn't steal. I don't know murder and all this. And it's like, did you? Out of appearance. Did yeah. you? Okay, yeah, on the outward of that, you, did you? And so God says, okay, if you would be perfect or if you would be you you want to be loyal that's what you're saying if you want to be loyal he said go sell what you got here come the real showing up test now and the bible says the man went away sad because he had lots of things lots of stuff he was rich towards material things but his heart wasn't rich towards god god said but now to be loyal to god you really I see something. I'll take you. You still have your peace. You have your joy. But he was sad because all he saw was stuff, things, earthly things. God was wanting to bless it. He was not operating in faith. See? And without faith, it's impossible to please God. I believe that's what Jesus was testing him with. It's like, go sell what you got because it's going to take faith to do that because you got great stuff. All you seeing is this, 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 and look, I can do this, I can do this. But if you ain't got it, it's all lost. Or what you gonna do? Are you gonna be loyal to God? You get it back. He'll add it to you. But it's a test, so you'll be able to stand and it not have you. But I believe with that man, the things had him. He didn't have it. It had him. It controlled him. Is my point, okay? So therefore, it's like God says, sell it. You okay? You be be loyal to me. Sell it, and you'll have riches like you never had before. Come and follow me. He couldn't do it. Man walked away sad. How many more people are like that? That's right. Most people, I believe, are like that. But it don't have to be. Yeah. There's your answer to what you've been praying about. Yes, exactly. God, why? Why can't I go for what? You're enemy to your own self. You're in your own way. 
Yeah? It's true. Of the song that God gave my wife back some years ago, and we sung it, you know, in here. It says, God is looking for a willing heart, one who will obey. He said, are you willing to be used by God to do his will? And then the song says, I surrender. I surrender. God is looking for that willing heart, okay? Will you be willing? Well, you know, mm -hmm. I tell myself that I'm willing <laughs> until the test comes. <laughs> because you don't know what the test is going to be like. I mean, just for example, here we are sitting there eating <coughs> our dinner, me and my husband just sitting there. I'm enjoying myself. And he looks at me and he said, it was some officers sitting there at the table. I mean, I saw them, but I mean, mm -hmm. what was it, like four or five mm -hmm. anyway? About four, about five. And my husband mm -hmm. looked at me and he said, we're going to have to pay for their lunch. I, I was like, I'm... I'm enjoying my lunch. Uh, <laughs> and they look like they enjoying their lunch, and they can pay for their own. Mm -hmm. And then I he hear the Lord say, you know, oh, be obedient to your husband and surrender, submit, and, you know. And I thought, all of a sudden, I said, whatever, I'm with you. <laughs> so you, you will go through tests, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not... Mm -hmm. They're not easy. You know, you have to die to your flesh. And like I said, it's something about money that we want to hold on to. I don't, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. you, you, I, you know, I've seen it myself. You, it's just money does something to you. It changes you. And you want to <laughs> hold on to it as long as you can. Because in your mind, I got, I want to buy this, 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 this. <laughs> and God is saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And all is right. And I, I, you still get it. Mm -hmm. I'll add these things to you, but <coughs> let me add them to you instead. You're trying to add them to yourself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. God wants to add it, and He's willing to. He's not holding out on you. No, he's not. I'm telling you, God is not holding out on you. But I'm telling you, there's so many people. Again, as she's talking about the movie, if you can look at that movie, it is a all yes, excellent is. point in that movie. The the you know, God don't want the riches to control you. That's right. All right, he want you to be able to control the riches. It's just a matter of order, and once you get their priorities together, get your priorities together, you'll begin to see. You may begin to see some doors open up. Okay, but as long as you're selfish, and as long as you're like ah, and like an oh, and they're beneath me and all that. Listen, uh, -uh. that's 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 not God. That's your flesh, and it's screaming, want more, want more, want more. He told. Saul, he says, stay little in your own eyes, King Saul. He said, when you had nothing, you were the faithful to God. You know? And as soon as you start increasing, then all of a sudden, <laughs> it started controlling him. And now he wants to get, get the big head on him. And, it, it, you know, money or stuff or things, it held the power to do that if you are not in the word of God. The only thing that's going to keep you at bay or, or to keep you bound is the Word of God. Go back to the Word of God. Go back to the Word of God. I even had the, the uh, experience even with women. And women, you, God says, here's, he told me in his word, he says, my son, keep my commandments. It will keep you from the strange woman. Somebody said, a strange woman. Yeah, who is a strange woman? Anybody that's not her is strange, okay? And, and, and she will help me out when I tell her. I said, honey, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? She will be glad. <laughs> Go back to the word of God. It will keep you. And it, Listen, we're not exempt from nobody else. We have temptation. We go through things, but the, here's the thing about it. We try to deal with it in the word. We try to be honest. And there again, like I said, you heard me say before, sometimes we will embarrass ourselves yeah. to help you. Lots of, lots of time you, you got leaders, you know, even in, it's nothing new. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees, they were walking around like uh, as if they're it. And that's it. That's the way they presented themselves. And God said, you hypocrites. That's what Jesus called them. They were phonies, as if you read it. They are phonies. You are fraudulent. Yeah, 
And I didn't know that you had hypocrites today until God opened my eyes. I mean, uh, not hypocrites, uh, uh, not the word of uh, Pharisees, which is a hypocrite. I did not know we had Pharisees in today. I said, oh, we just don't use that terminology. But just like in the Jesus' day, you also got the same type of spirit, uh, uh, Pharisee spirit. And they're like, ah, uh, they tried to kill Jesus. The very one who bring in life, didn't it? But yet, and they'll turn around, Moses and this, and they pushing down the very life himself, who is Jesus. You got the same thing today, that people just want that. I, I, oh, I got, if I can't be the head, haunt you, I don't want to gallop in the den, you know. Well, it's nothing new. Go back to the Word, and you read, you read the stories about him, and I'm telling you, it's up to date. Yes, it Same is. thing. There's nothing new. Just go back to the word, hear what the word, see what the word is saying. Like, wow. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know. And the Holy Ghost will give you revelation to it. When his eyes are open to it, you'll see it. Like, what we're going on today, y'all, in the election, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. And it's going to take, things are going to happen. But you just be sure you go to God and you make sure you're in God. All right, you make sure. I was listening to I was telling my wife. I was listening to a man yesterday on the television preaching. Oh, he was going on and he was on and on and on and on and on. And he was on and on and we got the truth. And we're this and this. And he was going, oh, yeah. And he was just on and on. And the more he talked, the more my spirit in me. Something wrong. Uh, and I told my mom them, I said, things that he was saying, and I just told my mom, I says, and my dad, I says, now what he's saying, he's saying he got the truth, and I said, and it does sound good. I said, but the Lord showed me just the opposite. And my mom and them looked at me like, huh? I, I was just, I, it done stirred in me. It done, I mean, that thing has stirred in me. And I said, this is not God. He is misleading his congregation. And the congregation sheep don't know no better. They just going by what that man had told them. You better go to God. But it did stir them and so, and I'm telling you, my mom and them went, and I gave them a, a nice earful. Because <laughs> I love them. I love them. Amen. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. Listen to God. He'll show you what to do. He'll open your eyes to things. It's like, oh, I didn't know God. We know. That's why the word is there for, because you don't know. But he does. Amen. I'm going to say this last thing and let pastor have it. <laughs> you know, we live in a culture, this world, we'll, we, we want to blame somebody because of the way we are. We want to blame the white man. We want to blame the black man. We, we, you know, th I'm like this because I can't get in the world because I'm black. And, mm -hmm. and, and I can't, it's my mama's fault. It's, it's my neighbor's fault. I, I'm homeless because I, I ain't got no job. Nobody won't hire me. So we always pointing at somebody else when mm -hmm. actually somebody say, well, you got, you got, Three, what, three, four hands pointing at yourself. <laughs> Have you ever looked at it? It might be, it might be your fault to be in your arm, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we want to, oh, uh, well, you know, I, 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 I left the church because the pastor offended me. It, it's all kind of excuses we come with. But I want to say, welcome to reality. Listen, <laughs> you're holding your own self in bondage. As soon That's as right. you realize That's right. that it's nobody's yeah. fault, you're there because of your maybe what you've been saying in your mouth, what you've been speaking out of your mouth, your personality, mm -hmm. whatever you've been, you know, maybe you've been got a lot of pride, you've been going around life like you got everything to get all this money and you ain't got nothing. You know, <laughs> you you are there because of the way you think. And because of what you're saying, it's nobody's fault. We, 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 we want to blame somebody else. We want to blame the pastor. We want to blame the president. We want to blame the black people. We want to blame the white people. Whatever, whatever. We always got all kind of excuses. And God is saying, look, you get your life in order. You get your house in order. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I can bless you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <clears throat> Mama and them said I'd never be now. Forget about what Mama and them said. <laughs> You just get in the word. What does the Lord say? What is he saying to you? And God is saying, 2025, mm -hmm. it's going to be a year to get your house in order. Why? <laughs> because I got blessings I want to bless you with. I'm going mm -hmm. to and forth searching. In other words, to me, mm -hmm. the Lord is like, God, I can't hardly find nobody. I'm, I got to go to and forth from the earth. I'm looking, trying to find somebody that I can bless and they can see my glory on. That I can say, look, this is my child. Man didn't make me rich. God Almighty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is the one that made me rich. 
Amen. 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 All right. His God is all about him. Amen. He should be the center of attention. Jesus. Yes. Because he is your life. He is your life. And without him and apart from him, you can't do nothing. Oh, absolutely nothing. Amen. Okay. And uh, again, someone may say, well, how do I get to know this Jesus? Very simple. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. What you heard today is word. Okay. And just, we're just trying to help you so you can go forward. And God says in Romans, the 10th chapter, and in this verse 9, he said, Now, if you would just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Yes, yes. You're going to have to believe it in your spirit, man, your heart, your spirit. Again, not your blood pump, your spirit. That's where you believe it, and you believe that, and for with the heart, man, believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What are you saying? And you're going to have to open that mouth. You need to open it up. If you're able to, open it up. Satan's trying to, there have been many times that Satan have came to me, and I'm telling you, some, some of you know what I'm talking about. He have helped my mouth together, yes. his spirit, trying to keep me from opening my mouth. Because he knew that in your mouth, in my mouth, is, is power, and we can have what we say. And I had the word in my mouth, and he was trying to keep me from calling Jesus. He didn't want that, because the Bible said every knee will bow at the name of Jesus, of things in heaven and earth and under earth. Many times that have happened. I've been in battles, I'm telling you, I'm just a battle trying to, oh, good Lord. It, and it's it, terrible. It is terrible. But Satan's trying to shut your, open your mouth. Open it wide, God says, and I will feel it. <laughs> open it and tell him, yes, Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe, just tell, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have done wrong. I've sinned. I believe that Jesus is my solution. You are the son of God, Jesus. Come into my heart. That's all it takes. I believe it. I received it. God says you are saved. That's how you get in the kingdom. God's way of doing things. He begin to, you begin to see things. As time goes, you begin to see it as you're in the word. You begin to hear it. You begin to, wow, I never known this. Yeah, because the God of this world who is Satan will blind the minds and the hearts of those who do not believe. And you ain't going to believe if you don't hear the word. How are you going to believe? You have to have the word to believe. Amen? So welcome to the kingdom of God. We trust that you will do what, just do what God says do. And a blessing will be, will, will, will come your way. Your joy level, man, to go up. And without the, uh, if you don't have no joy, you ain't got no strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength, okay? That's what you walk around side and, and I can look at the person. It's not that I'm judging. I can just see it in the Word of I said, that person right there ain't got no strength. They're sad all the time. Sad, I ain't got no strength. Ain't got no joy. But the joy of the Lord, you come to Jesus. God, here I am. I've done wrong. I've sinned. Help me, God. Help me. I've done that many times. Pull me out of this. Pull me out of this trap on me. Help me, God. And he comes looking for a will. <laughs> he even told me one time, he said, How did you get yourself in this mess? That way, it shocked me. It shocked because I wasn't expecting him to say that to me. Like, I said, Oh, God, help me. He said, How did you get yourself in this mess? It was with love. He said, With love. I said, I don't know, God. <laughs> but he helped me. Amen. Amen. God Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. Welcome to the kingdom. Now concerning your giving again, we're like, and this is part of it too. All right, when you go, God says in the ninth chapter of, of Corinthians, He says, uh, uh, in verse six, He said, the Apostle Paul said to the church in Corinthians, He said, "This I say unto you: He would sow it sparingly, shall reap also sparingly; and he would sow it bountifully, shall reap also bountifully." Every man, according as he had purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound with listen, all grace can abound to you, that you will always have all sufficiency in all things. You may be able to abound to every good work. Amen. And he can do that if you be obedient to him in faith as we sow our seed. We bring the oil in faith. Father, I believe and I expect you to meet my need. And I'm bringing my seed in faith. Because you said without faith is impossible to please you. So in faith and by faith, Father, we lift up our seed before we pray, God, for those who have given and contributed of their finances into the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God's sake. We thank you, God, for meeting the needs of your people and the 
grace of God will bound upon us according to your word. We believe it, we receive it, and we thank you for multiplication of the seed that have been sown. Not my word, but you said that. I believe it, and I count it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now we'd like to get to our uh, communion. We'd like to have communion today. And so you little cups you got there, and I don't know if some at home uh, you might want to do the same thing. We like to do the God said as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we show the Lord death till he come. You'll find this over in the scriptures uh, here in Corinthians. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm having a page. First Corinthians 11 chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm all over the place. Shake it up a little bit here. So we'll go. The Apostle Paul says here to the church in Corinthians, and also God saying to you and I today, that when we take of the bread and drink of the cup, we show the Lord's death till we come. We acknowledge that. We believe that Jesus did this for us, okay? And he said, but when you take it, partake of it, he said, don't take it in an unworthily manner. Now, what's an unworthily manner? A manner in which you know sin is in your life. You know it, you haven't confessed, you hadn't dealt with it. And, and I'm speaking to those as a Christian, especially you as a Christian, you say you're Christian, and you know you have sinned and have strayed out of the, the will of God, out of, and yet you're going and you're taking communion, drink, eating the bread and drink, taking the cup. God says, now when you do that, in an unworthy manner, you will cause, actually, let me see, he says, um, verse 29 of the 11th chapter of Corinthians, he that eat it and drink it in an unworthy, uh, unworthy, eat it and drink it, damnation to himself. That's eternal punishment. Not discerning the Lord's body. And he said, because of this, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. What's that? Premature death. A lot of people looked at it. You don't look at it and say, well, I'm contributing to my own uh, family members or children dying early. Why? Because you are taking this in an unworthy manner. Pride is what you're in. You need to repent. You need to deal with that. And that's God for forgiveness of it, okay? But God said, he says here, uh, verse 31, if you would judge ourselves, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened or corrected of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. And you don't want that. Amen. So, Father, we come before you and we repent of any wrongdoing that we have done. Uh, what our mouth has spoken things that have hurt somebody. God, forgive us and wash it. What we have backbited with our tongue, God, we have sinned. We're asking you to forgive us and cleanse us from this sin in the name of Jesus. Now, we're judging ourselves. Now we come after you receive us, that we've taken the bread and, and eat of the cup, showing your death till you come. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, now the Apostle Paul said in verse 23, he says, Now, for I have received of the Lord that also which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which you were betrayed, he took bread. And when he had uh, given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat. Okay. Now, after the same manner, verse 25, he said, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us all drink. Mm -hmm. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. You show it. You believe. Yeah, Jesus did this for us. Till he come. He's coming. Amen. And after they done this thing, the Bible says that they went out into the Mount of Olives. It's over in the Middle East. And uh, they sung a hymn. They sung a hymn. And they went out into the Mount of Olives. Amen.